Hello and welcome back to Calculus 1, section 3.5, derivative of trigonometric functions. So, we have to learn six shortcuts, right? Because these could also be done through those limit definitions. And limit definitions are outlined uh, in the book. Uh, first, we define uh, two limits <coughs> that would help us in a uh, procedure, uh, this uh, derivation. And then um, we are able to derive. So I, I kind of want to go through this exercise because it's really cool. Uh, this is something that honors students in calculus must know and be able to reproduce. Uh, it's really nice. So we define two limits. And now I'm going to do the, the good old practice that uh, we will know how to do when we cover certain <laughs> sections later down there, right? So now you have to take it, right, for what it's worth, right? And trust me that this is correct. Um, and then when we get to chapter four, uh, four, seven, or four, eight, whatever section is, um, you get to actually uh, uh, prove these two limits uh, for yourself. Uh, first one is that uh, limit as uh, x goes to zero of sine x over x is equal to one, and the limit x goes to zero of uh, cosine x minus x, sorry, minus one over x <coughs> is equal to zero. So these are the two limits uh, that we are going to use. Now, <coughs> as I said, both of these uh, limits uh, will be proved in uh, section four. And actually, you're going to have one of these as a homework assignment, and the other one is, uh, uh, will be done in class. Even your speaker is sick. Hello. Is it is it better? No, really? Perfect. We'll keep it right there. So, so now let's uh, take a look at the derivative of um, sine x. So what is the derivative of sine x? Well, let's use the limit h goes to zero of f of x plus h, which is sine of x plus h minus sine x divided by h. The only thing I can do there is to use the sine of uh, sum of the angles. So that's sine x cosine h plus cosine x sine h and then we have minus sine x divided by h. <coughs> now, we move uh, to, um, well, limit, h goes to zero. Now we go and factor. Uh, I'm going to combine uh, this term and this term and factor out sine x. So this is going to be sine x, and then we have cosine h minus 1, and we still have plus cosine x, sine h, everything over h. <coughs> now, if you remember the properties of limits, you can uh, break this apart and you will have the limit of h goes to zero of sine x times cosine h minus one over h plus another limit h goes to zero of cosine x sine h over h. Now you can break this further because for derivatives we have the product rule formula for limits we don't. 
So now we can break this even more as the limit h goes to 0 of uh, sine x times the limit of cosine h minus 1 over h and h goes to 0. So as you can see, we stole this because this h, that's th this is multiplication. So h is not common denominator, right? H goes either with this or with that, not with both. You have to pick one. So we pick it here. Uh, plus, and the same split happens here. Limit H goes to zero of cosine X times limit sine H over H as H goes to zero. So now, Let's go this blue. This is just equal to sine x because the limit operates on age. There is no age over here. So this is treated as a constant in the eyes of the variable age. So we just have the answer to be sine x. The next one we had as equal to zero plus this one again just cosine x there is no age there so it's just cosine x and this last one the limit that i wrote on top is one sine times zero is zero plus cosine x times one is cosine x equal to cosine x all of this work so that we can say that the derivative of sine x is cosine x Cool, right? Well, these are the limits over here. So I have this limit, except all of these x's are ages. So if you stare at it for a second, and now I scroll down, you see it's right the same one. Now, for honors option, I say, all right, it's time for you guys to go and do that the derivative of cosine is you go to the same calculation and you get negative sine right well it's a cool derivation you see a lot of this uh, cool trick uh, in terms of uh, the formula to add the uh, for addition of angles right and then the property of limits that allowed us to, 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 to um, uh, break everything apart and get these four limits and each one of those limits has its own answer and when you put it all together we get cosine. So now I'm going to define that the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. If you don't believe me, you are welcome to go and do the limit to show that it's indeed negative sine x. So these are the two that will give rise to everything else. Let's go. What is the derivative of tangent? Yes, work it out as a sine over cosine. Now, how do I work this as a sine over cosine? What, what am I supposed to do? Do what? What do I do? I can't hear you. The quotient rule, we just learned the quotient rule. So unleash the quotient rule upon sine x over cosine x. Let's go. You know the quotient rule. And when you are done with that calculation, which is the basic quotient rule, apply to this, you will have the derivative of tangent. And then, what is the secant? 1 over cosine. What is the cotangent? 1 over tangent. Or better, cosine over sine. Exactly. Quotient rule again. So, 
<laughs> you can you can do it. All right, let's take a look at this problem together. So we are working on the caution rule, right? So the caution rule will say uh, we have the cosine squared x, then we have uh, cosine x. The derivative of sine is cosine, so cosine x minus, then we copy sine x, and then I have the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. That's from the box. So, so now to work this out, we have a cosine squared x plus sine squared x divided by cosine squared x. One, thank you for your help. Very good. I was about to ask for help over here. That's 1 over cosine squared x. Now, what is 1 over cosine? Secant squared x. Good. Secant squared x. Now, this gives us the formula that will be the derivative of tangent x is equal to secant squared x. Now for the cotangent, which you should practice at home, because this could be an exam question, derive, uh, or what is the, the tangent uh, equal, right, to do, do the formula. Because it's just a calculation. It's not a proof where you're writing stuff, right? Using logic, you just follow this calculation. So, so this, like this is this is a, a, a proof in some sense. So it's a lot of stuff that involves a lot of rules and a lot of a lot of things and and then other theorems and stuff. In comparison to this, which is just a basic calculation. You're going to find this as a, as a homework question in your textbook, all right? So this problem 
or for that matter, the cotangent problem, that, that could be a problem on the test or the final, right? So this is, this is not a proof, this is a derivation of the, of the formula. So now we derive, and then derivative of cotangent is negative cos secant squared x. <coughs> now you will do the same thing over here, except you have cosine over sine. And you just grind through the, the process again, right? So these are the two. Uh, we covered uh, four out of six, right? The next one is the derivative of secant. Which is the derivative of what? One over cosine x, good. So now that is going to give us, um, you have the cosine squared, then you write a cosine x, the derivative of one is zero, minus, you copy one, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So now, the first term is, is done, gone, and the second term over here is uh, positive sine x divided by the cosine squared x. Now, if you break that apart, you will get um, one times sine x divided by cosine x times cosine x. Well, one over cosine is very good. And sine over cosine is perfect. Yeah. So what is the derivative of secant x? It is secant x tangent x. Its partner in crime, cosecant x, is going to be negative cosecant x. cosecant x, cotangent x. And those are the formulas. Now you have all six. <coughs> I have to write them all on a pile. So that we can talk in a way on how to uh, memorize this. If you have dreams and hopes of going to calculus too. These are the six formulas that you are going to need. And really going to need. Okay? So, um, I'm going to write these. But now I'm going to write like this. So, I have the derivative of sine x is cosine x. And the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. The derivative of tangent x is secant x, secant squared x. The derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared x. The derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x. Finally, the derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant x cotangent x. And I'm going to put the fat over here. There we go. Frame, and we're done. Emphasize it a little bit more, it's okay. You really can't go overboard on this one, you know. Beautiful. And disgusting at the same time. All right. No coffee, right? All right. So now we are going to talk about this. Where's my...
I told you where this came from, right? Yeah. Um, these are all six. And um, please note that there are patterns. So in mathematics, when you have patterns that, that, that work nicely, like this is called a finisher in equations, right? So first observe trigonometric pairing for derivatives. Do you see that without exception, sine is with cosine, tangent is with secant, and cotangent is with cosecant? Do we all see that? No exception to, for that rule for integrals or derivatives. Calc 1, 2, 3, calc 17, whatever. Doesn't matter. The calculus pairing of trig functions, calculus pairing of trig functions is, calculus pairing of trig functions is sine with cosine. <laughs> Tangent with, tangent with secant, cotangent, cosecant. One more time, calculus pairing of trig functions. Sine with cosine, tangent with secant, cotangent with cosecant. You look at these formulas, sine cosine, cosine sine, tangent secant squared, Secant, secant tangent, right? And this other side works the same way. <coughs> As we go to memorize these, observe that the ones on the left and ones on the right have the same form, right? Ones on the right are all the <coughs> tangent, uh, right? Like all the <coughs> trigonometric functions, and they're all negative. You have the co, right? Cosine, cotangent, and cosecant, right? So if they are k, then it's negative. And the rest is, right? So uh, memorizing this should immediately give rise to this with negative signs and swaps. <coughs> you must know this. If you don't, you have the limit to fall back on. Every time you need the Right, you need a, a derivative of the of the trig function. So um, this is it. And uh, what do we do with this now? Take the derivatives, right? We 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 shot this into the uh, quotient rules and product rules, and later on uh, all other rules, and we uh, we do problems. So. Uh, in that light, let's go and take a look at uh, some wonderful problems. What is the derivative of? Uh, do I want to say this actually now? I do, because you, you are going to run into it at homework. So I don't want to get yelled at. Okay, so here. We're going to have a separate lecture on these A modifications, but yeah. <coughs> and I'm just going to use the, the red to point into the, into the new stuff and talk less. Um, And for the other five as well. <laughs> there you go. This is how lazy I actually am. We'll put the green on top over here. That's, you look at that. Beautiful. So, you know, you have sine 3x or a sine. Um, and now is the time uh, where I to talk. Uh, I don't know if I ever wore my. Uh, this shirt is good if you run fast enough. Um, that's that business, right? Uh, the, the sine function, let's do some physics. 
sine function is just the wave, right? And uh, the the number here is modifying the, the, the wavelength. It modifies the period of the function. So uh, this number can make the wave happen faster or make the wave happen slower. So it's also angular velocity, it's like all of that stuff together. Uh, we can talk about it. Yeah. <coughs> so when I have this to adjust the speed of the of the wave, uh, I change this number. And that's the difference between blue light and red light in the wavelength of blue light and red light. Like 200, 400. So uh, now, if you are taking the derivative, you see that this a right, pops out. Now we're going to learn the rule next week, right? That will solidify that, and also the one with the e e to the a x, you know that stuff. So now, what's your job? If you want to, a a a a a. A, 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 right? So you have to put these A's everywhere uh, if, you, if you want to, to think about it. I'm just going to do an example of, uh, of this with, let's say, uh, a cotangent function because I can, right? So what is the derivative of cotangent 5x? It is going to be negative 5 cosecant squared 5x. That's what it is. <coughs> you cannot lose this argument. It has to stay there. Right? You are gaining this in front. That's what you're gaining. And um, that all will be... I did ask you already to spend considerable amount of time this weekend with uh, function composition in preparation for the most important stuff, right? Which is called chain rule. Uh, now, obviously, we want to mix this with uh, with other functions. So, how about x squared sine x, right? Can we take this derivative? What do I have to use? Product rule. Very good. So it's a formula, right? We go, now the way I learned the product rule is in my head, copy the first derivative of the second plus, right? So you can do that. Or you can just go uv prime plus vu prime, sure. Or fg prime plus uh, gf prime, whatever works for you, right? I say copy the first derivative of the second plus copy the second derivative of the first and I remember that I have to factor this as much as possible because I have to do eventually equal to zero in chapter four and continue so the, the entire uh, problem now that it's done for the grade right is going to become a margin work of a much larger problem and a concept in chapter four so I factor X and I have x cosine x plus 2 sine x. And there you go. <coughs> yes, you can write the sine term first if you want cosine second. Just make sure you bring 2 with the sine and x with cosine. Good. All right. Yes. So, um, you go up a little bit. Up a little bit. The, um, the purple box. Yeah, like, what if you have, you put an A in front of, like, if you have this hand X, you put an A in front of each X for the answer. Like, You're talking about this one, right? Yeah. Good. A goes here. So every x gets it, and then in front of the, yeah. And do you put an a in front of that tangent, too, or no? No. Okay. No, no. 
just one. Just one for the whole thing right here. Nice. Okay. What is the 237th derivative of sine x? We have time. Right? Let's get busy. You think I'm joking, but I'm not joking. So let's go. f of x equals sine x, f prime equals cos cos. We already have done with 237 degrees. Think of nature. <laughs> you have passed the science? Yeah. Wow, 200 degrees is done like this. It's amazing. You agree with that? How do we do this? It's a cycle of four. It's yeah. a cycle of four. And you know this, it's a cycle of four. Because you start taking these derivatives, right? Not happy that you have to go all the way to 200 something, but by the eighth derivative, you already see that there is a cycle of four. So, <coughs> function f of x is sine x, the first derivative is cosine x, the second derivative is negative sine x. And the third derivative is uh, negative cosine x. And now, when you take the derivative of cosine, you get negative sine, and then there is this negative, so it makes a positive sign. And that's the same as this. So the fourth derivative is sine x. And then fifth derivative is cosine x. The sixth derivative is negative sine x. And this is the seventh derivative is negative cosine x. And then the eighth derivative immediately is going to be again sine x. It's a cycle of four. So all I need to do is actually divide four into two, three, seven. That goes five times, and then 20, and then uh, 37. Four goes nine times, nine times four. 36 and the leftover is 1. That's what I'm looking for, the remainder 1. So, what is the derivative of the 237 derivative of this? Well, as you can see, for 59 cycles, and this is from here to here is the cycle number 1, from here to here is the cycle number 2. So, for 59 cycles, you always get back sine x but you have a remainder of one, which means that it has to be the next one, right? So the answer is cosine x. Because you have a remainder of one. <coughs> if uh, I, I asked for a fifth derivative, the fourth derivative would be sine x, and the fifth derivative would be cosine x. The remainder would be one, exactly. So, five, because five divided by four is one, and Remainder one. Mathematical gymnastics. Right. Where have you seen this before? Yes. Uh, with the um, with the uh, negative. Um, you know, add it. It's in algebra. Yes. Very good. In intermediate algebra. No. Imaginary numbers, that I. If you remember I, the I was uh, defined as the square root of, uh, yeah, negative 1. So I is the square root of negative 1. This definition doubled mathematics, by the way. <laughs> it's very interesting. Um, so now, when you have I, 
So i is equal to i, and then you have i squared, which is negative 1, and i cubed is negative i, and i to the fourth is 1, and then times i, i to the fifth is i again, i to the sixth is negative 1, and you can see it's the same thing. Why is that so? Give us why. Why is it exactly doing the same thing? Why is the cycle of four? Why is sine and cosine are no cycles of, of, of three or six? Why why also at four? And now you get to see a definition that you're not gonna find in your textbook, uh, coined by one of the mathematical gods, Leonard Euler. And it says this, sine x is equal to e to the i x minus e to the minus i x divided by 2i. There are i's everywhere. There is a way to write sine x with these. We are not going to use this in this class at all, but it's kind of a cool thing to know, right? So the next time someone tells you, ah, what do you know? I know this. Right? What do you know? <laughs> That's the, you know, the figure of speech. And here's the cosine because I know you would immediately want that one as well. Uh, no i in denominator. No i. <coughs> so when you take your derivative roots, you know what for me the for those of you that really want to go ahead and take the derivative of this, remember that 2i is a constant, right? These are not functions, these are constants. So that's just a denominator, don't worry about that, I'm just copy. What's the derivative of e to the ix? i e to the ix, because that's that a that drops down, right? Can you see that? Take that derivative that way, and what do you get? You get i e to the i x minus negative i e to the negative i x and the denominator still stays the same because of that. So this becomes i e to the i x minus and minus gives you plus i e to the minus i x. Do we, do we already see it? Factor out i plus the minus a x divided by two i still kill and look what the bottom so I took the derivative of the, the, the sign in the e form and when I took the derivative and followed the a rule uh, like this is complex variables okay this happens after all of your differential equations like it's a 300 or a 400 level course and electrical engineering, right? This guy over here will sit on me, right? Because this is what Tesla needed, right? This is what we were waiting for. Your alternating currents are waves, all right? When that frequency at which you change, when you set the, you know, the, the hertz, that's, uh, that's, the, that's the speed at which it changes. That's the number that goes in the sign, that goes in the exponent of disease. You, my friend, will go a little bit like this uh, with all the stuff uh, to to get to the physics of it because you have to know where the current is. You can see it. Uh, it's a little different than plumbing, right? You know, you get in the water uh, in, the, in the line because you can see it. You can't see electricity. So it keeps changing in the <laughs> All right. So that's a little bit of extra to connect and then make things interesting. And from there, some of you might, you know, pick it up and grow it into further courses, actually, courses uh, from there. Um, this, if I, you know, run, uh, if I run out of the cool questions for the exam, like six points right there, <laughs> or something like that. So, uh, what's the 153rd derivative of cosine x? And you go, called mathematical gymnastics, all right? Completely pointless and useless, but we can do it, so why not, <laughs> right? All right. Um,
Well, I, I, I think we're, we're done, right? That, uh, timekeeper, are we? Two whole minutes. Two whole, I can tell you a cool story then. Bye.